Competition is not always negative. That's why you have to study your competition. That's what we want to be talking about today, studying your competition. Hey guys, my name is Salem Sony and welcome to my YouTube channel where I help individuals such as yourself be more motivated, discover their purpose and understand that you are at God very best. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Uh, in our series about doing market research, today we're going to be talking about your competition because to some degree or another you're going to have competition while you're doing what you're doing. It's great if you don't have any competition but sometimes also not having competition doesn't let help you evolve. It doesn't help you get better, right? Like for example, just to give you an idea, when Uber started, uh, Uber really started with the idea of there wasn't much competition and then when Lyft and many other car pulling with the same idea of having everything to do through the app started coming, they started improving the option that we're giving, they started improving, tightening on the, on the time how they're paying their drivers and just trying to make the platform better. The more competition there is, uh, the more one is forced to uh, to improve, to to try to differentiate themselves, right? Think about this. Some of the industries where you see the the poorest amount of customer service, or so sometimes the poorest amount of product in terms of availability to the customers is where there's less competition. I'm thinking just the top of my head of like airlines, for example. Uh, I live in America and some of the major airlines here, they could care less about their customers because they know that we only have about four to five really choices on anywhere we can go, at least the bigger airlines. ISPs like internet service providers, for example, there's only a few of them. I think there's only really one in where I live. So their their customer service or sometimes the, the, the energy that I get sometimes is not the best, but they know that there's not much competition, so I don't have much of a choice. You know what I mean? So competition improves one's ability to service his or her product or service even better. So competition is not always negative. That's why you have to study your competition. That's what we want to be talking about today studying your competition. So the first thing when it comes to competition is first you want to understand who's your competition, right? Who are you doing competition with? So take time, whatever your sector is, whatever industry you're jumping in, whatever your product or service that you're providing, there are probably people who you've seen do this, maybe who've inspired you to do this, or you say, wow, you've had an experience, you're like, I want to provide something like similar to this or something better to what you've experienced. Those individuals will be your competition. Well, let's take an example. I live in Florida right now and due to the, the very hot weather and it's pretty warm most of the year compared to other places in America I don't know where in the world you might be watching this but there's a lot of ice cream shops and one of the ice cream shops that I know that's most around the area is called Twisty Street Twisty's Treats Twisty Street try to say that five times right it's, it's not that easy but one of the things I love about Twisty's is that they're kind of a franchise brand, so there's a lot of twist, um, uh, twisties all over, especially Central Florida. And one of the things that's interesting about twisties is that in their particular market, for example, let's say if you wanted to start an ice cream type shop or franchise, Twisties will be your competition, right? Because directly that's what they do. There's other bigger ice cream markets like, you know, Cold Stone, uh, Brewsters, you know what I mean? All they make kind of ice cream just different places. They're known for their ice cream uh, selection. That's what they do. Uh, Hagen does. Um, where are some other ice cream place? You may, maybe shut some uh, in the description. I would love to hear some of what you think about ice cream places. But those are competitions, right? Those are places, if you are wanted to make ice cream, they'll be my competition. But there are also people who are, because of their size, they'll be indirectly my competition because ice cream is one of the products that they carry. For example, think about McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's. All these big fast food places sometimes do offer ice cream. Like for example, you can get a milkshake or you can get a, a sundae and an Oreo blast. The point I'm trying to make is there's many other places where ice cream is one of the products that they do have. So for example, in McDonald's case, McDonald would then be indirectly your competition as well because you still have to uh, fight the market share that they're taking of the ice cream because of the customers who go there. Because if they can provide a burger and an ice cream to that customer in one area, that takes one customer potentially that could be coming to you for ice cream. Another thing that I want you to focus on is look at your competition and ask yourself, what is my competition doing right? 
What are they doing excellent? What are they doing that works? What are they doing that their customers enjoy, like very much, right? Or maybe you might yourself have been a customer at one point of what they're doing. What have you enjoyed about it? A lot of the times people like to focus on what somebody is doing wrong so they can be able to you know, point out what they're doing wrong. But you first wanna understand what they're doing right because they're obviously doing something right if they're making money. The reason why you wanna focus on what is they're doing right is because you wanna be able to uh, look carefully at what they're doing right and see if you can implement some of the same maybe not uh, exactly what they're doing because you got to be careful uh, in terms of intellectual property and things like that but you want to be able to uh, emulate trace their successful habits techniques marketing strategy um, so that you can adapt that to your business as well there's no need to <laughs> recreate the will if they, they know they've done something that works just implement that in what you're doing so you want to look at my competition what's my competition doing right can i implement whatever they're doing that is working in what i am doing uh, another thing you want to do in your about your competition is know the pricing understand what is their pricing point so obviously because you're trying to make money doing business you're gonna have to charge your customers Maybe you can start at the beginning where you giving samples of your product or you giving uh, free uh, consultations or appointments or services for what you provide. But at some point you're gonna have to pay for being in business, right? Trying to make money overall. So you wanna look at the price point. So look at your competition. What are the price points of your competition? For example, if I was, again, in the ice cream business, if I was, my competition was like Twisties, Dairy Queen, uh, places like Wendy's, uh, Burger King, places like Cold Stones, I'll look, okay, what are some of their pricing, right? For a cone versus a cup, uh, how much are they are they putting per, you know, an ounce of ice cream versus the pricing that they're giving? How much do, if you get sprinkles, if you get a, a sundae, for example, if you get a banana split, all these different things, right? You can tell I've been to a lot of ice cream places. But um, so the, the reason I'm saying this is because understanding the pricing is gonna help you to have a little bit of a frame to where you wanna start, right? You don't want to be overpricing the market. You also wanna be, you don't wanna be so much undercutting the market that you're not making any profit, right? So listen and look at the pricing. Something else to keep in mind when you're thinking about competition when you're doing market research is how would I differentiate myself from my competition? So this is a question that's quite important to keep in mind while you're doing everything from the beginning. For what we talked about, who is your competition? The pricing of your competition, what are they doing right? Throughout this whole time, you have to be asking yourself, how can I differentiate myself from them? What can I do that will help me stand out to help myself be branded better so that I can be able to uh, stand out from the competition because at the end of the day, if no one knows you're in business, it's hard for you to make money. So people have to be able to, to pick you out of the crowd. You could drive out on the road and you know that's a McDonald's because you've been so accustomed to seeing those yellow arches and the commercials on TV, the burgers. You've been accustomed to know who they are. So uh, they have found a way to brand themselves so they can differentiate themselves from a Burger King or Wendy's or something like that. It could be the way their their fries taste, you know what I mean? For example, people are very familiar with Rita's. Uh, they don't, I don't necessarily consider them an ice cream place. They make a lot of like smoothies and like, um, um, I see products that stuff, but they do also sell ice cream. But uh, I don't know. Do you guys consider Rita as an ice cream place? I don't know. <laughs> but um, they have really differentiated themselves the way they do. This is it's mainly like a I've seen it mainly in like northern east coast like philly new york area so maybe some of you guys don't know about that but it's a great place like hugging dust hugging dust hugging dolls <laughs> for example it's a more of a premium ice cream they're differentiating themselves with the taste the flavors that they give you and their price point reflects that you know so what can you do when you're entering a market to differentiate yourself from the competition. Something to always think in mind because that's really where the money lies. And lastly, I wanna talk about understanding market share. Understanding, okay, here's the thing about market share. Market share is whenever you come into an area, how much of the available customers are still there for you to be able to uh, talk to? How much of the, the customers can, can be uh, raving fans of your product or your service? 
the more market share you gain, the more market share you have within a particular area or sector, or whatever the case may be, the more market share you have, the more potential of making more money. That's the, the higher the potential of making more money is due to the increased market share that you possess. As I said, for example, when you look at a company like Apple and Samsung, when it comes to the uh, phone, uh, smartphones, uh, many uh, uh, electronic gadgets that we see today, Samsung and Apple have taken so much of the market within there that it makes sense that they have such high valuation. You know, last time I looked, you know, uh, uh, Apple was almost around a trillion dollars as of 2017, almost around a trillion dollars in terms of market value. I mean, it's just mind boggling. But when you look at it, they're a computer company who've understood how people relate to phones, uh, tablets, and they've just been dominating the market right there. So they're a market share within the arena of electric of a phone, smartphone, and uh, things of that sort is pretty high. So you have to start thinking of yourself as well. When you do a market research, you look around the area, how many people live within where you are? Let's say if you're gonna have a local business, for example, how many people live wherever you are? If you wanna open a um, hair boutique, for example, or I mean a hair salon, and um, or a boutique, for example, let's say if you wanna open a, a boutique, you wanna be selling jewelries you know, for women or things like that. Look around your area, how many other boutiques are there? You know what I mean? And if there are many, the few that are there, how many people go shop there versus shopping online versus shopping to the bigger supermarket and getting stuff like that? You want to start looking at that. Count the population within the area. Count how many people go to those different places. That gives you an idea. You want to know these different things because they're going to help you in terms of knowing exactly what are the availability of the people who can be able to come to come shop where you are you want to open a restaurant you want to know how many other restaurants are there who are maybe serving what you're serving or maybe specializing in what you want to specialize on what are they providing how can you be able to gain some of those customers maybe it might be that you provide something that's completely different that you attract a new crowd so those are things to keep in mind when you're thinking about this okay what are in terms of the market share what how much of the market share is available um can i still make an impact with that market share and the last thing to think about also with market share is uh, with the available market share with the price point that we talked about at the beginning can you make a lot of money with that market share or maybe you should be going to a different place you know maybe the local area where you're trying to do business is not going to be conducive for you being massively successful uh, maybe you might have to relocate maybe you might have to have different location maybe you might have to do everything online maybe you might have to provide a service that's completely digital uh, so those are different things you want to know now with the internet today with the smartphone and a laptop you can do business anywhere you know so something to think about uh, this has been a video where we've been talking about competition uh, understanding your competition how to research your competition when you're doing your market research for your business I hope these were helpful for you if it was uh, give this video a thumbs up it really does help me and also share this if you're new, consider subscribing as well. Let me know in the comment section what you guys thought about this. Uh, many of these videos to help you guys. If you guys have any ideas or anything more specific you want me to cover, I would love to. Watch the next video. We're gonna be talking about understanding um, the product or the service that you want to do. But until then, remember your God's very best. I love you guys and I'll see you next time.